1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 is the text for our meditation. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity is kind. God's love is characterized by kindness. The root word for kindness means to furnish what is needed, useful, and profitable. This word is translated as good, as opposed to bad. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. First, Luke 6 verse 35. This word is also translated kind. But love ye your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Again in Ephesians 3 verse 32, the Apostle Paul uses the word kind in our relationship, describing the willingness to forgive offenses committed against us by others. Ephesians 3, 4 verse 32 read, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. It describes God's kindness even towards the ungrateful. Our Lord on the cross says, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. What is the origin of this kindness? Titus 3 verse 4 tells us, It is exemplified by God's love toward men in the person of his son, Jesus. Titus 3 verse 2 says, But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Saviour, <clears throat> toward men appeared. The kindness and love of God, our Saviour. God's love toward men is in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ's life and death exemplifies the personality of God's character called kindness. And while we are reading through the Old Testament, I do not forget your New Testament. Uh, as we read, you would realize that the, the Old and New Testament complements and provides instructions uh, for a wholesome uh, spiritual outlook. Jesus taught his disciples, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This teaching of benevolence is the outworking of this character of kindness. How is it that when we give, we lose something that we have given away and yet we are more blessed? Well, there was one time I gave away a set of commentary, uh, six volumes, uh, Matthew Henry's commentary, very precious, it was given to me. And then there was a, a <clears throat> there was a brother who came along, and he needed an encouragement. And so that day, I was able to bring six volumes and gave it to me, gave it to him. So I met him recently. 
He says, oh, yeah, I remember you gave me the six-volume Matthew Henry commentary. Well, I seem to have lost something when I gave that set of commentary. But you know what? Uh, along the line, somehow, uh, two sets of the same commentary came into my possession. So although one was given away, I said, wow, I feel a little bit uh, of a loss uh, because it's something that I cherish very much. But at that time, uh, the Lord didn't... Uh, well, He sealed the desire and at the same time, He did not... Uh, well, I'm not saying that... that, uh, you know... Yeah, <laughs> uh, we, well, uh, what I'm saying is that I have experienced that blessing, the blessing of the law, not in so much of receiving what has been given, but rather in knowing that the Lord knows our needs and He uses us as His instruments and we can trust Him to be stewards for Him. This truth has to be understood by faith. I believe this is true and therefore I do as instructed and experience God's greater blessing. This is a perspective that is beyond the carnal mind. It can be understood only in the context of God's supernatural love as it was injected into our bloodstream, enabling us to give sacrificially and unconditionally. Uh, Paul says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Now, the word shed abroad means to be, as it were, injected. Right? Injected into your bloodstream so that God's love comes to you and it becomes a part of you. God gives you His love and you realize a change just as it was in Zacchaeus, right? After he uh, unknowingly or well, out of curiosity climbed up a sycamore tree to seek the Lord, the Lord came to his house, saved him, and it says, I will return half of my goods and I would uh, make right all the old, old things that I've owed. That was how the Lord changed Zacchaeus. We are in our natural self, self-seeking and self-satisfying. This change is the power of the gospel experience when the believer put to death the old man and put on the new man. When the chief tax collector Zacchaeus met Jesus and repented of his sins, he said to his Lord in Luke 19 verse 8, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. He showed kindness to the poor and he was willing to make restitution for anyone he has wronged. This is the disposition of a God-fearer, one who is fully aware of his utter worthlessness and sinfulness and how he has been forgiven much and therefore he is able to forgive much also. So we have studied the, the character Job. Right? Job lost everything and then in the midst of uh, his agony, he was tormented by his friends uh, who uh, accused him of sinning against God, uh, accused him of uh, inherent sin in his life, which after his time of examination, he had to refute. Of course, at the end, the Lord vindicated him. But in order for him to be restored, 
he first had to forgive his friends. The Lord said to him, pray for your friends or ask his friends to go to him. And the sacrifices of Job will be accepted by me, the Lord said to them. So the friends had to go to him and in order for him to forgive or in order for him to do so, well, he first had to forgive them, isn't it? And he had to overcome the hurt that, was, that came upon him to forgive them. And after he was able to forgive, then he was able to, uh, then he was restored. Or the Lord restored to him twice all that he had lost. Have you truly experienced God's forgiveness for your sins? This is the most important question that one can ask to any man in his lifetime. If you have not experienced God's love and His forgiveness for our sins, we cannot truly appreciate the truth of showing kindness, favour and forgiveness to anyone who does not deserve kindness. If we have been struggling with some sin in our life and we realize that God is confronting us to forsake our sin, do not hesitate but turn to Jesus today and turn away from your sin. Only Jesus has the power to forgive your sins because He's God. Simply cry out to the Lord Jesus, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner and experience the forgiveness of your sins by the blood of Jesus shed for you at the cross for the cleansing of your sins. This is the first step of learning God's kindness to sinners such as us. We pray that the Lord will use us as His unworthy vessel to show kindness to someone today and every day. As we have been saved, so may the Lord help us to do some good to someone, for someone. Charity envieth not. The word envy, according to Webster's Dictionary, is a feeling of discontentment at the sight of superior excellence, reputation or happiness enjoyed by another. It describes one who complains discontentedly or murmurs at another's prosperity. It is to fret or to grie or grieve at the real or supposed superiority of another, and hence to hate the person on that account. The Bible tells us that the character of Christian love dispels the entanglement of envy, but exhibits a calm contentment of the heart at the supposed inequalities of life. So this is God-given. So that, you know, you no longer have that, that envying heart. What took it away? Who took it away? Well, the Lord took it away from us, you see. Once we understand the character the character of God's love and what is not uh, that which we ought to have in our spiritual demeanour. Envy was the cause of the first murder. Cain killed Abel. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 4 that Eve bare Cain and then Abel. Abel was a keeper of the sheep and Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the fruit of the ground for an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought the firstlings of his flock of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. He had not respect. And Cain was very wroth. And his countenance fell, 
And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. The Bible reveals to us that this emotional baggage called envy is sin. It caused Cain to rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. It was a destructive emotion. It festers hatred in the heart until it cannot contain and results eventually in the discharge of this pent-up anger in the hurting of the other person, whether in physical or verbal abuse. This is not so for the Christian whose heart is filled with God's love. It is not envious, but it's calm and contented to even cheer or be happy to see another prosper. For the student, this love enables him to help his fellow student without being afraid that he will one day do better than him. For the colleague, it enables one to impart know-how without being afraid of losing out in the process. This is such a wonderful Christian trait. If you are at the receiving end of the blessing as a result of the generosity of another, there is the greater blessing which this verse describes for us if you are the one demonstrating such a love to another. This makes all the difference in a cruel world where the Christian testimony shines as light in the darkness. Well, you see here a difference. Indeed, charity envieth not. That there is that constant overcoming of the corrupt emotional makeup of the depraved heart that is taught here. So, before we get worked up, we get to be cultivated. Uh, here, you may ask, how can such love be cultivated? Biblical love is an active emotion that God gives to His children. We are to seek God's help in godly repentance every time we realize even an inkling of evil arises in our heart when we see the prosperity of others. We are to cultivate that heightened awareness of this sin in our heart and ask God to nip the evil in the bud and not allow the hatred to fester. So if you don't know, well, you allow it to overwhelm you, overcome you. But after you know, the Lord taught us, then we see that it is a, a, a character trait that we should not have and that we seek to, to dispossess it. So we are to cultivate that heightened awareness of this sin in our hearts and ask God to nip the evil in the bud and not allow the hatred to fester. We are to realize that we are special in God's sight and God has a special plan for our life that is unique and beautiful. Right? The other person is the other person. God has a plan for your life and it's good. It's the best God has for us and we need to realize that and when we have realized that, then we can be very happy who we are, isn't it? And we must learn to rest in God's goodness in our lives. We must learn to count our blessings. Our hopes and expectations must not be earthbound, but heavenward. God's reward for His servants is not according to how the world rates gain, rather how we count all things lost, for Christ's sake. We have all to give an account of our stewardship in this life before Jesus, our judge. May we truly have this favour, have His favour in the day of reckoning. Charity vaunteth not itself. Charity vaunteth not itself describes this aspect of God's love that is void of haughtiness, of any inkling of pride and boastfulness. To vaunt is to boast, to make a vain display of one's own worth. Such boasting is vain and empty. 
The heart that is at peace with God does not need to elevate itself. The godly man that possesses God's love has not the rebellious streak in the heart to elevate himself against his God, manifested by the need to elevate oneself over other men. This sin of pride began not on earth, but in heaven, when the most beautiful of God's angel fell as a result of pride. Lucifer, whose name means light bearer, became Satan, the prince of darkness, by five sinful thoughts to usurp the glory due to his creator. Satan was cast out of heaven. We read this in Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 15. Notice the five thoughts of self-exaltation that, result, that resulted in his fall. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weakest the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sights of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sights of the pit. Satan loved himself more than he loved his Creator. There is not a reverential fear of God in his heart. He allowed the fear of God to depart from his heart in that moment of folly. When we have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, we possess the power to humble ourselves before God and before men. And this we do by putting our Lord first, letting Him have the preeminence in every day, in every area of our lives. The love of God that is mightily outpoured by the Holy Spirit upon every penitent sinner result in the sinner being forgiven of his sins. Romans 5 verse 5. This brokenness of spirit and contrition of heart is acceptable in the sight of God. The sinner realizes that he cannot save himself and therefore use fully by faith to the complete atoning work of Christ on the cross for the remission of sin. So when Jesus came upon earth, right, what was the last word in the Old Testament? That's the word cursed. Cursed. That's the old, last word in the Old Testament in your Bible. And what's the, the first word the Lord uttered when he began his public ministry? The word is blessed. Yeah, blessed. And what did he say to us? Blessed are the poor in spirit. This is the first word that he tells us. That we are double blessed. Makarioi. Uh, blessed with multiples of blessing when we would realize that we are nothing, that we need help, that we need the Lord. This submission removes the guilt of sin in the heart. This freedom from the bondage of sin and its mental torment is true freedom. It gives true peace and true joy. This is God's only plan of salvation for fallen, sinful men. This is the character of God's love. It is the amazing love of our Creator to sacrifice His beloved Son who suffered on our behalf to purchase our redemption and to cancel our debt of sin once for all. The Son of God had to endure great sufferings and humiliation, giving up the outward expression of His glory to live and to be scourged and to be crucified by sinful men. Our Lord Jesus humbled himself. This was how our Lord won salvation for us. So when Christ was on earth, he came to the land of Samaria and he met the woman at the well. You remember John chapter 4? Uh, yeah. There the Lord uh, offered uh, the living water a fountain that flows without end to the man, to the, to the woman at the well, and she received it and she was so happy. Let us examine the disposition of our heart moment by moment 
and guard it against the sin of pride that so easily beset us. Pride is the mother of all sins. It is a sin that stumbled Lucifer. But our Lord Jesus in the wilderness temptation overcame the sin of pride when he humbled himself in obedience to God's word. Satan took him up to the highest mountain or an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, all these things I will give to you if thou would fall and worship me. Jesus defeated Satan with this response. God, get thee hands, Satan, as written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone shalt thou serve. Deuteronomy 6 verse 13. Satan is a defeated foe. Jesus gives us the power today to show forth God's love, submitting ourselves to, his, to the teaching of His Word. This humility is pleasing to our God and this submission is the expression of His love. Charity founteth not itself. May the Lord strengthen our hearts and comfort us and help us to study and know the character of His love and that we may manifest forth this truth, the character traits of God in our lives for His glory. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy word. Comfort Thy people and strengthen us as we wait upon Thee, uh, as we study the character of Thy love. May Thy Spirit come and form the Christ in us. My thy mercy help us. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.